Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm answering question number nine, part C, C part one. Um, and this is from the May June 2020 IGCSE Cambridge um, 0580 syllabus. This is paper four, variant two. And C part one here, they've drawn a pair of, of axes for you, and they say on the diagram, part A, sketch the graph of y equals x minus one squared. And part B, sketch the graph of y equals a half x plus one. So both on the same diagram, we've got to sketch these two graphs. So part A, they asked us to do the quadratic first. So I'll just do the quadratic first. Um, so I'm going to put the working for it here. So you have y equals x minus one all squared. Now for any graph, when you want to sketch a graph, first of all, you kind of have to think about what type of function it is. Okay, and this is a quadratic function because if we were to expand this, you would see you'd get x squared minus 2x plus 1. So we can see that it's a quadratic. And it's a quadratic where the x squared term has a positive um, coefficient. The, the, the coefficient of x squared is positive 1. All right, so therefore it's going to be a smiley face. It's going to look something like this. It's going to have this type of shape, a U shape like this. So we know it's going to have that type of shape. So once we've, we've um, determined that, now we've got to determine a few things for example where does it cross the y-axis where does it cross the x-axis now it crosses the y-axis it crosses the y-axis when x equals zero because the equation of the y-axis is x equals zero everywhere on the y-axis x equals zero so you want to find where a function crosses the y-axis that's any function at all you replace the x with zero in that function so if we take the function and we replace the x with zero you have 0 minus 1 squared, which is minus 1 squared, which is 1. As we can see from here, if in the expanded form as well, this is the y intercept because when x is 0, you're left with y equals 1. So we know that it passes through the point 0, 1. And where does it cross the x-axis? Well, the x-axis, its equation is y equals 0. Everywhere on the y-axis, on the x-axis, y is equal to 0. So when you put y equals 0 into this function, so you have x minus 1 squared equals zero and we try to solve this well we can solve this by taking the square root of both sides um, and if you take the square root of zero you're going to get zero of course so x minus one equals zero so x equals one you can even think of this if you want as x minus one times x minus one equals zero so x equals one and x equals one so you can think about it x equals one twice this is a special type of um, um, called root place where it crosses the x-axis where it's called repeated this is called a repeated root okay so this is important here because when you have this type of repeated root the graph actually for a quadratic will turn on the x-axis at that point so I know that this graph is going to cross the y-axis at x equals 1 uh, sorry y equals 1 and it's going to turn on the x-axis when x equals 1 so when y equals 1, it crosses the y-axis, and where x equals 1, it turns on the x-axis. So it's going to have this type of shape like this. So it's going to be a quadratic that looks something like this. So I'm going to try and draw it as best as I can. It's going to have this type of shape. It's going to turn. I've missed it there. Now I, I've i got a bit more of a... I can do that here. You can't do that in the exam. So you've got to be careful to try and make it, um, you know, touch the the x-axis, the y-axis, to touch, to touch the y-axis as it turns. It turns on the y on the x-axis. Of course, they don't expect perfection. This is not that good, but it's all right considering my, the tools that I got here. But what you should do is, what I don't do is, I don't mark one and one first and then draw it. I know where one is roughly in both of them. This is a sketch. It doesn't, be, it doesn't need to be to scale. You don't put zero, one, two, three, and all that kind of, all the other values. You just have to roughly where it crosses the y-axis. It should be, of course, in the positive side. Where it crosses the x-axis on the positive side of the x-axis okay so that is a sketch of y equals x minus one squared okay so that's how that will look we found out where it crosses the y-axis where it crosses the x-axis in fact because it has a repeated root it will touch the x-axis at that point because it's going to have a uh, you know this kind of situation here it's called repeated root okay anytime you have that it turns on the x-axis Okay, now, that's part one. Uh, that's the, the straight, that's part A. So this is like part A done. And now for part B, it says sketch the graph of y equals a half x plus one. So I'll put the, 
the uh, working for this y equals a half x plus one so we're, we want to find out what type of this graph this is well this is of the form y equals mx plus c so this is a, a linear graph it's like a straight line and here there's different ways we can do this okay we can sketch this in different ways one of the ways is we can see that the you know the gradient is a half and the y-intercept is one so it's definitely going to pass through the same point zero one like we can say that the y-intercept is one and the gradient is a half okay um, but what we should also show is where it crosses the the x-axis and we we can know where it crosses the x-axis in the same way on the x-axis we know y is equal to zero and if i put y is equal to zero i'll have a half x plus one equals zero if i multiply both sides by two this stays at zero this becomes x plus two and then subtract two from both sides you have x equals negative two so it's going to cross at negative two somewhere over here it doesn't have to be accurate and it's a straight line so i can use a ruler to draw this graph and it must pass through these two points here whoops it must pass through these two points so i'm going to draw it passing through those two points and that's the graph the sketch of y equals that's y equals a half x plus one and that's part b of this question okay so there there we have the answer to um, C part one, where we're asked to sketch these two graphs. So you've got the quadratic. Okay, we must show it turning on the on the x-axis. We must show we must show that it it crosses the y-axis at one. And the straight line graph, you should show the places where it crosses the axes. Um, it's a straight line, and it's got this positive gradient, which is of half. All right, so there's the answer to part A and B. So when you're sketching a graph, first thing you do, you think, what shape does it have? What type of function is it? The highest power is x squared, it's, it's quadratic, so you should understand it's going to have this shape. If it was a negative in front of the x squared, it would be a frowny face. It would be like that, and so on. And then you try to find the places where it crosses the axis. Okay, quadratics sometimes cross the x-axis in two places. It cuts through once and comes back up, or the other way around, and that's where you normally have two, two roots. Sometimes it has no roots, sometimes it doesn't cross the x-axis and it turns before it reaches the x-axis. In that case, you have to find its vertex to find where it turns. Okay, and that's another thing here. If you want to find the vertex of something like this, this is actually of this form. y equals minus x minus 1. And this is like completed the square form, you could say almost. So you can say that the vertex of this is the y value is whatever's out here, which is 0, and the x value is whatever makes this bracket, which um, makes this bracket become 0, which is 1. So 1, 0 is the vertex, as we can see, the vertex. So that's another way of deducing that is the vertex of this. But uh, the fact that it's a repeated root will tell you it's the vertex. Okay, so that's just a little discussion about the sketching of this graph. Then part 2 says the graphs of these two intersect at the points A and B. Find the length of AB. And this is worth 7 marks. So there's a few things that we have to do here. So first of all, where the graphs of two functions intersect is basically um, when you solve the two equations simultaneously. So we can substitute, for example, instead of this y, I can replace it with what y equals in the other function. So I can say x minus 1 squared, replacing this y with x minus 1 squared, is equal to a half x plus 1. So the solutions of this equation will be the places where they intersect. So if I can find the points where they intersect, then I can find the um, the length between those using the, the length formula. So first I need to expand this bracket to solve this equation. So as we did up there, there's x squared minus 2x plus 1. It's like x minus 1 times x minus 1 as we know. Don't make the mistake of just saying x squared minus 1 or x squared plus 1. No, you have to expand this x times x, x times minus 1, that's minus x, and then you have minus 1 times x, which is minus another x, that's minus 2x, and plus 1. Or using the, the pattern where you square each term, so square this term, that's x squared, you square that term, that's plus 1, and the middle term will always be these two multiplied and then doubled, so x times minus 1 times 2 is minus 2x. And whichever way you want, that's fine. Equals a half x plus 1. Now, I personally prefer not to have fractions in my equation, so at this stage, I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by 2. That way, the whole thing will be multiplied by 2, so this is going to be 2x squared minus 4x plus 2 equals, and this will become x plus 2. Now I can bring everything on one side, so I'll have 
um, 2x squared minus 5x, 2 minus 2 is 0, equals 0. So taking out the common factor of x, I have x and 2x minus 5 equals 0. So we have x equals 0 and x and 2x minus 5 equals 0, in which case 2x equals 5 and x equals 5 over 2, which is 2.5. So those are the two points where they intersect. And let's see if that makes sense according to our diagram. Well, we can see for sure x equals 0, they intersect. We can see that's where y equals 1. And the other place where they intersect is going to be here, 2.55 over 2. So what we need to do, so let's, let's say this is A, and let's say this is B. We need to find the coordinates of B. Okay, so we, we need to find the y coordinate of B. We have the coordinates of A. So we can say, all right, when x equals 0, just to make it complete, we say when x equals 0, we see that y is equal to now. We can use any of these two equations, and both of them are quite simple to use. If I put x equals 0 into here, I'm going to get minus 1 squared, which is plus 1. If I put x equals 0 in here, I have y equals 0 plus 1, which is plus 1. So that's, let's call that point A, 0, 1, as we can see from the graph anyway. And when x equals 5 over 2, we can say y equals, again, both of these are equally as easy to use. In fact, I think this is actually easy. So 5 over 2 minus 1 is so we can say y is equal to 5 over 2 minus 1 squared, which is, um, that's going to be 3 over 2 squared, which is 9 over 4. So that's y when x equals 5 over 2. So the point b is going to be 5 over 2 and 9 over 4. So we want to find the length of ab. Now the length of ab is going to be the square root of the difference between the x coordinates. So we can say, for example, 5 over 2 minus 0, 5 over 2 minus 0 squared, plus the difference between the y coordinates, which is 9 over 4 minus 1 squared. And that will give us the length of this line between the points A and B. So this is going to give us the square root of 25 over 4, plus, and this is 9 over 4 minus 1, that's 9 over 4 minus 4 over 4, which is 5 over 4 squared, which is 25 over 16. So I can just put this in my calculator now. I don't need to do too much here. So square root of 25 over 4 plus 25 over 16. And that gives my answer 5 root 5 over 4. 5 root 5 over 4. Now, we don't leave our answer in this exact form. It didn't tell us to do that, and the instructions tell us to round non-exact answers to 3SF. So we can see that the, uh, the answer here is going to be S to D button, 2.795. 2.795, it goes on. So 3SF is 2 point, oops, what is I, I wrote the wrong thing there, 795. Be careful there. 2.795 goes on, so it's going to be 2.795. So you stop there, so it's 2.80 to 3SF. So that's 2.80 units. That is the length of the line between A and B. Okay, so there we have the answer to this question, which is 19 part, sorry, which is 9 part C. It's on page 19. Okay, 9 part C from this May June 2020 paper. Other questions, including the question before this uh, part A and B, can be found in the playlist, which will be in this area over here. Other questions from this um, topic of sketching graphs, you can find in this playlist over here. And I'll also put it in the playlist for um, solving quadratic, so solving simultaneous equations, like in, in the in the topic of quadratics, let's say. That will be in this playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Um, thank you for watching and see you soon.